So, you just want to learn gangsters. First, you just got to learn to win. There, there are three ways to win. One is to have $10,000 at the end of your turn. The second is to own all joints of one color. The last is to own 10 joints of any color. For all of these, you must have all of your game members on the board. Okay, we know how to win. Next, we need to know how to use the pieces. There's a summary card that comes with the game that shows the color die associated with each piece, as well as the special rules associated with each of the pieces. Now let's take a look at each of them. The Racketeer uses the green die. He can buy and or upgrade buildings. He can go criminal to shoot at other games. The amount of moves you get in a turn is equal to the number of racketeers you own divided in half, to a minimum of one. If you have no racketeers, your only move for that turn will be to buy racketeers. The vamp uses the red die. While she is legal, she can seduce any racketeers and or thugs. When criminal, she can extort for cash in unowned buildings. The thug uses the black die. When legal, he can help defend joints. While criminal, he can shoot other games and or extort for cash in unknown buildings. The public use the white die. When they are legal, they can wander around the board. While criminal, they pay the joint's owner. Only one can be in a space at a time. Public, once on the board, may not use the subways. The cops use the blue die. They can bust joints where there are criminal public and can shoot criminal gang members. Okay, let's learn about movement. First thing to know is each piece has its own die color, and that's the only die that you look at when you move that piece. Next to know is that you can only move between criminal and non-criminal sides of the piece, or change that, when you move a piece. Next, you, in this game, you move by exact count. So one of the tricks of the game is to maximize your probabilities of success. Next is when you're inside a joint, you can leave through any exit. So, with a roll of three on the racketeer die, we can move the racketeer through the top exit. One, two, three. We could move it through the left exit. One, two, three. Or we can move it through the right exit. One, two, three. When a piece is drawn from a cup, its first move is to the subway indicated by its die. With a roll of two on the public die, I could pull out one like so. One, two. Or I could move it into the purple joint. One, two. And then I'd need to flip it to its criminal side because public are always criminal in a joint. If you own two joints that are adjacent, you can move directly from one of them to the next one by using the tunnels. With a roll of six, I could move my vamp like this. One, two, three, four, five, six. But if I wanted to get into the building with the brown thug in it, I could use the green building I own. Like so. One, two, three, four, five, six. Let's suppose that I own the brown building next to the green one as well. Then I could reach the racketeer. One, two, three, four, five, six. A piece that enters a subway space may, at that moment, treat itself as if it was in any of the six subway spaces. Just like the subway, all six of those spaces were one giant space. A cop that enters the subway, on the other hand, is replaced by a new cop when it comes out of a different subway space. A five on the cop die could let me move cop number two to subway five. One, two. Then move over to subway one. And since the cop is moving through the subway, we put him back in the cup and draw out a new one. In this case, cop number ten. And we continue moving him three, four, five. During movement, a piece may not enter the same space twice. And if a piece ends on the street, it cannot point, it must be pointed to its next space, which cannot be the space that it came from. With a five, I pull a public and move it. One, two, three, four, five. And since I ended it in an intersection, I choose which way to face it. All right, you've learned how to move. Now let's go through the turn sequence. Fortunately, on the lower left-hand corner of the player int card, that's completely summarized for you. First step is the upgrade and buy phase, where the racketeer buys buildings and upgrades them. 
Second, you roll the dice and start the two minute timer. First thing you do in the timer is, is move tops or announce a bribe. Then you move your gang members or announce recruiting. That's after that, the timer ends. Notice that uh, now you actually pay for the bribes and recruits that you announced and get them. Then you uh, collect money for your extortion and your uh, organized crime. And then last but not least, you handle your shootouts. Okay, the first phase is the buy phase. Look at the joint where your racketeer is. If you don't own it, you can buy it for the door price and mark it with a level one marker. If you already own it, you could potentially upgrade it a level for the same door price. The highest level you can upgrade to is the number of that color of joint that you own. For the three, Brown can move to the other red building. One, two, three. At the start of his next turn, he can buy it for 600. If his racketeer is still there on his next move, he could upgrade it for 600, since he already owns two red joints. He would not be able to upgrade it anymore until he owned a third red joint. Next is you uh, move or bribe a cop. Bribing a cop is easy in gangsters. You just pay a hundred bucks times the roll of the blue dice. To signal that you want to bribe a cop, you put the blue dice on, the, on a cop piece. If you don't want to bribe a cop, you can move a cop that's already on the board, or you can bring a cop on at the subway indicated by the blue die as long as the crimes in, uh, in progress on the board is greater than or equal to the number of cops. To bribe, place the blue die on top of a cop or on the crimes in progress track. Uh, or you can move a cop using the blue die, one space, or, since the number of cops is less than or equal to the number of criminal pieces on the board, I can also bring a cop on at subway number one. But suppose instead I had rolled a blue six. That would let me bring a new cop on at subway number six, starting him there, one, two, three, four, five, six, and then choosing his facing. Okay, what can the cops do for you? Well, they can raid your opponent's establishments, and they can shoot up your opponent's gangs. <clears throat> in fact, you should be trying to do that all the time. If a, co a cop can only enter a joint if there's a criminal piece there. Uh, on the converse side, the public can only enter a joint to commit a crime. Once, uh, if a cop enters a joint where the only criminal piece is a public marker, you to return the public marker to the cop, the cop returns to the cop, and the joint is reduced by one, and we call that a raid. Uh, if there's another criminal piece there, a, a, a racketeer, a vamp, or a thug, then the policeman hangs around for a shootout at the end of the turn. Since we have a roll of six on the cop die, we can pull a cop out of subway six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Since there is crimi a criminal public in the joint, we put the public in the cup and reduce the level of the joint by one. After that, we take the cop and put it back in the cup. We do all of this right after moving the cup in, and not after payouts have happened. Okay, you're done with the coppers. Now you get to move your gang. Get your racketeer to a new joint to buy it. Get your thug out extorting. Get your vamp out extorting. Take those pieces and go, take your thug or racketeer and go on a shootout. There's also a special move for the vamp called seduction, when the non-criminal vamp goes into a space with an enemy, racketeer, or thug, she immediately converts one, one level from the thug or the racketeer to her own gang. You coming, Sugar? Yeah. Since the red player has a roll of two for his vamp, he'll move it, one, move through the subway, two, and since the vamp moved and ended its turn in the same space as an opponent's piece, she can take one away from him and add one to her own game. During movement, you also announce the recruiting you intend to do for each of your piece, pieces. Once that movement is over, the next thing you do is if you are paying for a cop bribe, you pay for that bribe, it's $100 times the blue dice, then you draw a bribe from the bribe cup. <clears throat> then you keep that bribe until the cop that's named on there, on the bribe, does something you don't like, in which case you play the bribe and the cop returns to where it was at the beginning of the turn. 
if you draw the bride marked UNT, that's untouchables, that means the cops basically didn't take your bride. You're stuck with an unusable piece, but you can throw it back into the cup anytime you want, just in case you want to give someone else a chance to draw it. After the timer expires, you pay for any bribes that you've declared earlier and any recruits. In this case, the bribe is $300, $100 times the roll of the blue dice. I could draw, uh, then I draw a bribe from the cup. I could draw one showing a police officer number, in which case if that cop ever does something I don't want it to do, I can show the bribe, return it to the cup, and the cop returns to its starting place. I could also draw the untouchables, in which case my bribe has failed. I can keep that marker, it's worthless, but I can keep it as long as I want, or uh, return it to the cup just in time for someone else to have a shot at drawing it. Remember our example where we moved Cop 2 through the subway and Cop 10 came out to bust the green vamp? Well, suppose that green player had the number 10 bribe. Then Cop 10 would be returned to where he was at the start of the turn, which in this case would be in the cup. Next you pay for your recruits. The maximum number of recruits you can have join your gang in one turn is 7 minus the blue die. To determine how much a recruit costs, add up the price on the spaces on the, on the track for the recruits you're going to get. So if you're going to get your third, fourth, and fifth racketeer, that's 300 plus 400 plus 500. And then multiply that total by the green die for racketeers, or black for thug, or red for vamps. And that gives you the total cost of your recruits. During movement to signal recruiting, place the die on top of the piece that you want to recruit or on top of the track uh, for that type of gangster and announce, I'm recruiting thugs and racketeers. The number of pieces you recruit is limited by the blue die. In this case, since it's a two, I can only recruit five. I'll recruit three racketeers and two thugs. Now my two thugs are going to cost 600 plus 700 times the roll of the dice, five, or $6,500, and then I recruit my two thugs. All right, now we collect our payoffs. Every uh, criminal thug or a criminal vamp in an unknown building collects $100 times the roll of its respective dice. Now we get to the public. A criminal public in your joint pays its level times the level of the joint times the price of the joint. So you can get a very big payoff, and they call that organized crime. The brown player rolled a 4 for his vamp and a 2 for his thug. He moves his vamp 1, 2, 3, 4 and flips her over to criminal so she can extort. At the end of his turn he gets $600. $200 from the thug and 400 from the vamp. Ray moves the public from the subway to his joint. 1, 2, 3, 4. At the end of his turn the public pays him $2,400. All right, you've got your payouts. Now, any public piece that's with a criminal goes back to the cup. And now you can finally pick up the dice. Uh, until this point, from the time you rolled them until now, you don't change the dice. because, And if you do, the penalty is that your extortion rolls are considered to be just a one. Now you start your shootouts. The pieces that start a shootout are cops that moved, into joints or, uh, or criminal locations, racketeers or thugs that moved into a space and declared a, a hit, or a joints that have enemy racketeers or thugs in them. All right, now each gang member, each gang that gets to start a fight targets one other gang by color. So you're not shooting at a piece, you're shooting at a gang. And then you roll the dice. Racketeers roll one dice per level, same as uh, cops and thugs. Joints roll two dice per level. Vamps and public uh, don't shoot at all. Joints, guards hit on a four or better. Thugs and cops hit on a five or better. Racketeers hit on a six or better. The cops <clears throat> are treated as pieces that of the moving player's color for both attacking and uh, receiving hits. Now, the one thing that's special about them is they only target criminal pieces and the hits that they roll can only be allocated to a criminal piece. On Brown's turn, 
cables his thug into the red joint. One, two, three. And flips the criminal. The public pays red another $2,400. Then, because there is a criminal piece in the same face as the public, it goes back to the cup. The, each gang that was attacked can now return fire by selecting an opponent of any color, and not, not necessarily the person who attacked them, and attacking. That continues till every gang that was attacked in some way or another has had its chance to return fire. Now, all, everybody, all at once, allocates their casualties to their pieces. Uh, one, you cannot have a uh, vamp receive a hit from a thug, or a non-criminal piece receive a hit from a cop. And uh, one special defense of joints is that if all the attacking uh, racketeers and thugs were destroyed, then any joint, any hits that were allocated to its levels are ignored. Uh, the cops uh, can be allocated hits from criminal pieces uh, up to their level. Uh, that, that belongs to the moving player, just like before. And some cops go back to the cup the moment uh, the shootout around is over. Now, a shootout happens, since at least one of the conditions is met. Since Brown owns five thugs, he gets to roll five dice for them. He hits once. Since the joint gets to roll two dice per level, Red gets to roll six dice for it. And he rolls another one for his thug. The joint hits once, and his thug misses. Now, they take their hits. Brown only has one unit, so he loses one thug. Red can't choose to lose his vamp, since thugs cannot shoot vamps. So he chooses to take the hit on his single thug, and has to take it off the board. Green doesn't do anything to get involved in the fight on his turn. Another shootout round happens, because there is an enemy unit in a joint. Red rolls six dice for his joint, and hits once. Brown rolls four dice for his thug, since he now has four thugs, and he hits twice. Since Brown only has one unit that can take hits, he loses another thug. Since the only unit that the red player has that can take hits from a thug is now the joint, the joint loses two levels. Now it's Red's turn. Since he rolled a four on the cop die, he can pull out a cop from subway four. One, two, three, four. Since Red has only three racketeers, he has one action, so he chooses to move his racketeer one through the subway. Two, three, four. And flips to criminal, so his racketeer can help in the upcoming shootout. The joint rolls two dice and hits once. The racketeer rolls three dice, since Red owns three racketeers, and hits once. The cop is controlled by the player who moved him in, which in this case is Red. The cop rolls two dice, since that is his number. He hits with both of them. The brown thug returns fire with his three dice and hits three times. Brown takes all of his hits on his thug, and since he now has lost all of his thugs, he takes his thug piece off the board. Red allocates the first two hits to the cop, since the cop can take a number of hits equal to its number. Red put the last injury on the joint, but since all opposing criminal pieces in his joint have been taken out, he doesn't actually apply the hit. The cop goes back to the cup. He would have gone back to the cup at the end of the turn, even if there was still a criminal piece there. Shootouts last just one round. You have to wait until the end of the next round before moving pieces and joints start another shootout. One of the fun things about gangsters when you get hit, your opponents get to shoot you with their squirt guns. I want my two dollar to take that! Aha! And that's a lot of fun. All right, now let's talk about how to set up the game at the start. Each player, in turn, purchases joints until each player owns three joints whose total value is $1,100 or less. If you spend less, you get the change. Then each person is given $2,100 and they purchase their initial gain. That's done the same way as recruiting gang members, except that you treat your uh, die roll as if it were a one. So this is as cheap as you can get them. And at, that, at the end of that, you also get change if you need it. You could spend the change you had from the buildings. Then all the gang members are placed simultaneously in the joints that each gang has to start with in any combination that you want. 
We'll show an example game setup. For this example, we'll be acting as, there, as though there are only two players in this game. First is buying buildings. Brown is first and buys downtown bus station. Then Red goes and buys Jack's auto body. Brown buys Brazili's Riverside next. Red goes for Sadler's Stitchery. Brown's final building is SMC's Cartage Co. And Red is Serva's Market. Brown has $200 left over, and Red has $700 left over. Brown is hoping to upgrade and score with the public. Red plans to buy 10 cheap joints. Next is the initial game purchase. Everyone does this at the same time, and secretly. Brown decides to buy 5 racketeers, 1 vamp, and 1 thug, for a total of $1,900, and gets 200 more in change. Red buys 6 racketeers, 1 vamp, and 2 thug, for a total of $20. $700 using up 600 of the 700 he saved earlier. At this point, everyone shows their game purchase. Then they simultaneously place their game renders in their joints. Okay, you know how to play the game. Now the trick is to pick a strategy. You're going for joints, a monopoly, or cash. And each turn, make sure your moves work towards that strategy or towards a backup plan. Good luck and have fun.